Hi, I'm Dr. Surinder. I'm the director of Cosmosis India. We are an aesthetic surgery and plastic surgery center in the heart of Bangalore on Brigade Road. Cancer of the oral cavity is quite becoming quite common because of cigarette smoking, because of the palm chewing, tobacco chewing, and uh, the pouches that you get that people keep in their mouth. Apart from that, there can be some benign conditions which are basically cysts in the mandible called an adamantinoma or something, which might also cause a cyst in the jawbone. The mandible is a jawbone, and because of which the jaw has to be removed. Usually, the jaw part of the jaw is removed in oral cancers. So these are cancers caused by all the above mentioned which I told you about. What happens is sometimes they come in such late stages that only removing that skin part is not required. It is already involving the tooth, it's already involving the bone, it's already involving the other structures. So what happens is you have to do a composite resection. When you do a composite resection that means the skin outside, the muscles, the nerves, the glands, the mandible that is the bone. Uh, the bone inside, then the teeth and of course the mucosa that is the lining of the skin inside the mouth. So all that has to be removed and that is called a composite resection. So when you do a composite resection, what happens is the there is a large defect which is all go through and through from the skin to the inside of the oral cavity. Sometimes the tongue may be involved, you might have to remove the part of the tongue also. Now what are the options when you, when you do that? Usually when there is such a composite uh, resection planned for the cancer, usually the plastic surgeons are involved right from the initial stage of planning. So we plan to reconstruct during the same procedure. It is not that like pre old olden days where you used to do, do the cut and then just you know put some skin or something where to just cover it and then do the deformity correction later on. Nowadays it is called a composite reconstruction. It is also done similarly at the same time. So it's a long surgery, the resection might take about 3 to 4 hours or 5 hours and then the reconstruction simultaneously starts and that takes another 6 to 7 hours. So what are the options? The options for mandibular reconstruction are quite uh, varied but the most popular option nowadays and which is followed worldwide is something called the fibular reconstruction by microvascular uh, anastomosis. So what this does basically is in the leg you have two bones which is the tibia and the fibula. The fibula is a smaller bone which is a supporting bone. So what happens is that bone has its own blood supply. So that bone is taken up as a whole segment along with a little bit of the muscle and along with the skin. And that whole thing is supplied by one vascular unit which is the basically the artery in the vein which supplies that whole part. So we harvest it from the leg. We take then that bone because it is a non-weight bearing bone it can be used elsewhere so it doesn't cause any harm to your normal activities. So that bone is harvested and the fibula is basically it can because it's a long tubular bone we shape it we break it and we shape it into the shape of a mandible depending on which segment it's removed whether it is the front whether it is side or whether it is the angle. Depending on that we know by CT reconstruction we find out what is the sizes and then we already create a template and key and once that bone is removed then we break it and fix it in certain parts to give you the shape of a mandible and then once that is done and the segment is removed that mandible is fixed there that fibula that bone that from the leg is fixed it is fixed to the remaining part of the mandible and the blood supply that small blood vessel which is supplying this whole segment is again anastomosed or joined to one of the blood vessels in the neck so what this does is it gives you live viable bone basically which is surviving because of the direct blood supply which is coming and it starts the healing is faster or you have multiple layers of tissue so you have the skin you have the muscle and you have something for the inside lining so you can do a composite reconstruction the third and most important part is once because it has its own blood supply the healing and the integration is much better and the final and the most important part is that because it is live bone, we can implant teeth into it. Okay, so once the uh, first six months are done and the fibula has settled in well, the blood supply is well established, then you have these uh, screws with those implants which, are, which can be directly implanted into the mandible, the new fibula bone. Because it is vascular bone, it will not fall off, it holds the screws well. And so you can do a reconstruction for the teeth as well. 
So there is a whole composite reconstruction which is possible and that is done by most commonly nowadays by using the free fibula. It is called the free fibula mandibular reconstruction and it is done with microvascular anastomosis.